is the schmo with the pro inside the luxurious hotel room of the number fourth ranked UFC middleweight Jared Cannonier here in Houston, Texas. How we doing? We're doing good, Schmo. We're doing real good. How are you doing, my man? The Schmo can never complain. It's a beautiful day outside, man. But I'll say this. If the Schmo was in Jared Cannonier's shoes right now, we'd be really upset with the way things are shaking up. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't. <laughs> I try not. You know, uh, uh, I try not to get upset. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep control of my emotions. So I'm trying to take it in stride. And uh, but you know, I will. You know, uh, speak up when when the time is right. So um, yeah, um, it's it's not looking too good. I don't really like waiting in the wind a lot. You know, I want some official word as to what's going on. You know, but um. People are talking about me. That's a good thing. That's always a great thing. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, as long as they're talking about you. Speaking of talking about things, the Schmo heard you talking to Helen Yee Sports about Darren Till, who's supposed to step up March 7th for Robert Whitaker. Some contract disputes, but the Schmo's got to ask you, when is the deadline for Jared Cannonier for calling a squad douche to a March 7th fight appearance? Ugh. What are we, what, five, four weeks out? Yeah. Five weeks out? I don't know. Uh, you know, three three weeks is really cutting it close. Um, I don't I don't want to put no deadline out there. You know, I, I do want to fight. I'm getting ready for a fight. So, um, essentially, you know, I can fight tomorrow, you know. Um, but I would like, again, I would like confirmed words so that, you know, I, I'm, I'm putting in the work. I'm... I'm dieting and all that stuff, you know, weight cutting, cutting weight ain't fun, but you know, um, it's a part of the job. So, uh, I'm doing everything I need to do to be ready for March 7th. Absolutely. And in case it doesn't work out for March 7th, you want to wait for a title fight or are you willing to fight one more fight to get the title shot? That's a good question. <laughs> it depends on what's on the table. You know, we'll see how things shape out. Um, I'm ready for the title shot, though. You know what I'm saying? I want my shot. You know, I think I've earned the shot more than anybody at the top right now. In the top five, I think I've earned – I think I have the most credentials credentials that warrant a title shot. Um, <clears throat> my willingness to uh, take a contender's fight is fading. I will say that much. So um, – but I don't like waiting either. I want to fight, you know. I want – you know – I want to fight. I mean, how many different ways can I say it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, none of these guys at the top want to fight. You know, everybody else got their thing going on. So, give me the title shot. You know, let them handle their stuff while I do my thing. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be great. Let it happen. That's it. The schmo can sense the willingness to fight out of you. Let's talk about what's going on at UFC 247 in Houston. You got Dominic Reyes against John Bones Jones. Many consider him the GOAT. Now, when you were fighting at light heavyweight, you lost to Dominic Reyes. Yeah. Do you give him a chance? Do you see him getting the upset victory Saturday evening against Bones Jones? Well, anybody has a puncher's chance. And we are at the very top of the... Um the you know these are elite fighters the both food of, chain top of the food chain yeah, both of them we are you know we're all elite fighters and stuff you know so one of them has to lose both of them has uh you know everybody has a puncher's chance i personally feel that jones has way more uh of a, a chance of winning that fight he has far more diversity in his weapons in his range and just everything you know what i'm saying they don't call him the greatest light heavyweight of all time for nothing he hasn't done what he has done to many different, you know what I'm saying, uh, competitors, elite level, whatever you want to call them, for nothing. So um, if you're asking me to pick who's going to win this fight, I will say that both of them have a chance to win. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure uh, Dom has been putting in way more work than he's put in for any other fight. You know, I'm sure uh, Jones is expecting to see the best uh, Reyes he's ever seen and vice versa. Is, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting fight. So um, we'll see what happens, and um, I'm going to enjoy watching it. A fighter that you share a victory over an opponent with being Anderson Silva, Chris Weidman. He's returning back to the middleweight division. Where do you see him fighting and aligning in the pecking order of the top 10 fighters in the division? I mean, man, he's up there. You know, he's known as one of the strongest grapplers in the division. 
but uh his hands have been getting a lot better you know um <clears throat> he's just been getting hit a lot and um so i don't know uh, i'm not here to do i don't do rankings you know what i'm saying i don't um I don't dot delve into that part of the game, but I will say he is still, you know what I'm saying, Chris Wyman, who uh, defeated Anderson Silva, who defended his belt, you know what I'm saying, uh, what was it, one or two times, I think? Twice, yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, he's still up there, so um, I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. The Schmo wants you to fight soon so we can make a return back to the Black Angus. That'd be nice. They've been hooking you up these days. Every time I go in there, yeah. They know me, yeah. The killer gorilla. He's the pro. I'm the schmo here at UFC 247 in Houston in the hotel room. Nothing dangerous happened here. We're out.